Hi, Paolo Brancati. Thank you for being here and for taking Hi, Leanna. <laughs> for this interview with Accenti Magazine. My name is Leanna Cusmano and I'm one of the editors. Um, you star in From the Vine. It's a Canadian production set in Canada and Italy starring Joe Pantoliano, Wendy Crusen, and yourself. Can you tell us about the movie? Sure, yeah. Um, it's an Italian-Canadian production, as you said, and um, it's about a downtrodden CEO who is facing a moral crisis, so he goes back to his his hometown of Accenza, Italy, to recalibrate his roots, and in going back there, he reconnects with old friends and wants to revive his nonno's old vineyard and finds this, this newfound joy there. Excellent. Uh, you also co-produced the film. What made you decide to get involved in this aspect of filmmaking? You know, I, I produced um, a, a couple of features before this, and I was looking to make something that felt like a love letter to my family, to my nonni who helped raise me, and Sean and I had worked together years prior. So we'd been, we'd been sort of circling a few ideas for Italian-Canadian um, co-pros, and he brought this story to me that Ken Cancellara wrote, and pretty early on, you know, um, attached me as an actor and, and as a producer, I, I sort of felt like it was exactly the right, the right fit for me in both those regards. Um, and an absolute, one, one of my uh, absolute pleasures on this was being able to bring cast that I either admired or had worked with prior and crew that I had um, a rapport with or were, were fans of, getting to bring them overseas and getting to do this and have this experience as a team was, was such a, you know, a delight for me as a, as a filmmaker. So is this aspect of the production something you see yourself doing more of in the future? Producing? Yes. Yeah, I, I have a production company called Brang Cedar Productions, and, and we've been producing for about five years now, and I've produced things uh, with my co-producer, Michael Cedar, and also without. So um, I, I really, my my sort of rule of thumb as a, as a producer is when a story can't get out of my head, when I'm stuck with it, when I get a little obsessed about it, I know that that's a really good inclination that I should pursue it. So whether it be, you know, something in a web series format or right now I'm developing um, a couple of television shows um, and I'm about to go into production on my fourth feature as producer, um, a really great script that Katie Bolin wrote. So I, I think I just sort of, um, and compelled to produce content that feels really original and that um, maybe highlights a voice that I haven't heard before. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm certainly, I certainly have a bug for wanting to continue to create content that feels reflective of my experience as a Canadian Italian young woman. I think I, I, uh, I definitely loved that in From the Vine and some of the content I'm, I'm looking towards um, has that that theme in it, um, you know, cause we, cause Toronto is so special in that way. We get to grow up and I got to have my grandparents with me and Italian was my first language. So there's something very specific about growing up in Toronto and um, really being encouraged to, to let those colors of, of your roots flourish. And so I, I'd love to, uh, to continue on that, that journey as both an actor and a producer. That level of representation is really important. And on that note, actually, you said that the film is a love letter to Italy, but also a love letter to your nonni in particular who helped raise you. So can you tell me more about, just so it just so happens, about growing up in the Toronto area and that relationship with your grandparents? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I think uh, for me, they, they were like other parents for me. So I felt like I had six parents growing up. Italian was my first language and, you know, their, their backyard was my haven and I wasn't, I didn't go to camp or like sleepovers or anything. And my grandparents were my friends and, and they, you know, my, my nonno who passed away a year ago this week, um, he was such a huge source of support for me as far as this industry goes, all of them were. And, and, um, he drove me to every single audition with my nonna. So they were huge champions for me, as were my parents. And um, a huge part of wanting to do this movie was for him and for my my other grandfather who passed away years ago. So I have such a connection to them, um, you know, it, unrelated to this business. They're, they're some of my best friends. So, um, yeah, I just, I, I feel that connection to my roots um, in Sicily. I'm not from Echidenza, but um, as a as a second generation Canadian, you know, when I first traveled there, I was 10 years old and I was so overcome with emotion because I immediately felt 
this connection to my family that was there. Um, I don't know if you have family elsewhere, but you meet these people that you've never known before and you feel immediately tethered to them and to the land. I couldn't believe how much that felt like a part of me too. So in, in some ways they are in everything I do and they will continue to be always a part of the fabric of my creative process. Of course. That can, it's, you're right. I felt that same connection when you go there and you meet these people that you right? might have met before, or you might only have ever seen in pictures, but that yeah. is something that you feel in a way that's really, really visceral and emotional. So if, Absolutely. You, if you went to Italy for the first time, you said at the age of 10? Yeah, I was nine or 10. Yeah. And the first time, how did that compare to going there to film, to do a project in Italy? You know, it had been, I'd been quite a few times since, um, getting to go there and, and work was like surreal, of course. Um, I actually got to build in, I got to go for one day to Sicily for my dear cousin, Mariangela's wedding right before we started. So I was, a, you know, leading up to production, no matter whether it's Italy or here, it's, you know, stressful in all the best ways. But when you're, when you're going overseas, there's all these other, um, you know, challenges to contend with and, and, and worries. And I think that's part of the job of a producer is preparing for every scenario. So uh, it was really beautiful and grounding to be able to be in Sicily right, right before I was obviously crying for <laughs> days straight. Cause you know, you're, you're crying saying hello, you're crying saying goodbye. And then to go right to Accidenza where it didn't feel like, like what I find so spectacular about Italy is there's always more to see. I go to different towns and there's a whole new um, like personality to the town. And it's, you know, like, it's like, it's all, it feels totally different town to town. So I'd been there to a Cerenza for a uh, location scout earlier in the summer for a week with our DP and with Sean and Ken they were so welcoming right away. They were at arms wide open when, when I landed, when all our crew that they hadn't met landed. I was quite, you know, overcome with that generosity from, from those people. And, and I was also really excited to get to feature a town like that um, in, on film that I don't think gets highlighted. You know, I think we in North America see a lot of big city Italy and it was really interesting to be really legitimately working with and featuring actors who were from there. And you can really feel that in the movie. You can feel the DNA of the Echidenza people um, in every frame of it. So yeah, it was, I'll never forget it. I had to keep reminding myself in, in stressful moments, like look out the window, remember where you are. You know, this is, it really was a once in a lifetime kind of thing. So, you know, my nonni were certainly very proud uh, for sure. What was it like to work alongside actors like Joe Pantoliano and Wendy Crewson in that environment? So, so cool. And, you know, even Marco Leonardi, who joined us, you know, from Italy, like we had this incredible cast of Americans, Canadians, and Italians working so seamlessly. Um, Joe is obviously such an incredible character actor. His body of work is so extensive. I was so excited when we thought of him for this because I was saying to Shani, I've never, I don't know that I've seen him do something like this. And, you know, an extra treat for me to get to play opposite him as his daughter. Um, with Wendy, she is absolutely Canadian royalty. And she'd come out to do a very tiny web series I produced a couple of years ago, you know, just to support me as a young filmmaker and was so amazing. So when she said yes, it it really was this vote of confidence, I think, for other cast signing on. And she's, you know, a dear friend also. So um, there were lots of, lots of uh, dreams, you know, checked for me on this, on this project. And uh, the, so working alongside this cast was certainly one of them. The COVID-19 pandemic, has, as we all know, has changed civilization as we know it. Um, mm -hmm. How are you coping with this, keeping in mind that obviously there's been a halt to television and film productions everywhere? Yeah, it's been, it's been so um, strange to see that, that complete halt in, in the arts, in so many fields of work. Um, it's been quite devastating. I think when I think about the arts, I think it's so interesting because in this period, we are all leaning on the arts so heavily for some kind of, you know, to take a breath. And 
binge watching is obviously like that's a verb now we we all partake so thinking about how much has been stalled is quite incredible and it's not just the actors we see on in front of the camera it's all of the crew it there's so many um jobs that are that are that aren't able to work right now. So that's been really difficult for, to, to see. For me personally, um, it's, there's been some times where I feel incredibly creative and there's been other times where I feel really uh, low about it. I think we're seeing such a, such a incredible shift in the world. And I think there was, it was long overdue. Um, but I think we're we're feeling from all the unrest in the world that maybe we'll come out of this, hopefully having learned something, I hope. And I think we are going to be seeing a shift in the television and film industry as far as like what what is being created, um, what what voices are creating. And I look forward to when we all get to be back on set. We are slowly doing that. So I've been in soft pre-production on, on the feature I mentioned, we're all in this together. Um, and we're about to start shooting in August. So, you know, I think it's, it's baby steps, right? We're all looking to each other for support. We're making sure we want everyone to feel safe. And, um, I think everyone is so eager to have new content and maybe have content. I hope from the vine fits into this where there's a little bit of hope, um, that comes from the kind of product we're putting out there and, and maybe people's appetites for for feel good uh, content is a little greater. Well, we'll probably need a lot more of that than we might otherwise have. Have you felt that that pressure to take advantage of quarantine at all? That's such a good question. Some days, yes, um, and 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 some days not. I'm pretty. I can be very hard on myself, as I think uh, a lot of us can, and especially when you are passionate about your career and you enjoy your work, when that's taken away, there's a bit of this, um, yeah, there's sort of like an identity crisis of sorts. That being said, um, health, mental health and physical health has been honestly at the forefront of my mind. I think a lot about um, our frontline workers. I think so much about my non-niece generation that are isolated right now, that can't see their families, that aren't able to have that physical touch. That stuff is really, um, weighed heavily on me. I, my, both my nonas are still around, but even, you know, just when we screened from the vine a couple of weeks ago for father's day, we screened it at, uh, 30, over 30, um, retirement homes and, and seniors homes across Canada. And thinking about how many people aren't able to be with their family right now. I think anytime I'm having a down day, I think of that and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fine. I just, I want everybody to be able to be healthy and be able to hug each other. And that, that I think is is top of mind. So everyone wear your masks and, <laughs> and you know, and, and I think it's also about gently entering this new post COVID land so that we don't have to go back into it. I think that's something I'm thinking a lot about. Seeing a lot of, a lot of communities and a lot of countries that have unfortunately rushed. And that's really the last thing that any of us should be doing. Scary. Very scary. Yes. When we talk about going back to work too, for all those reasons, that, that as well won't, won't be able to happen, of course, if we don't all do our part. So all of that's floating around in my brain. It's definitely a strange time to be releasing a, a movie, <laughs> I think, but, I, I but, I, but hopefully, but, but, but then we sort of feel like maybe this is, you know, exactly the right time as far as viewing a movie like this, which is such a co-viewing experience that can be watched with so many, um, among so many generations, you know. Exactly. How was it received? How were the screenings received a few weeks ago? So warmly. I mean, so warmly across the board as far as it not having to be for a specific age group. You know, I think we've seen at film festivals before this, people bringing their parents or their kids and feeling really connected to it. And I think feeling a different kind of nostalgia depending on where you're at in your life. Um, but it's been, it's, it's felt like everyone's really gotten it. And also there's been a lot of levity and a lot more humor. I think, I think a lot more laughs than I even anticipated, um, which is so great. And uh, it's been, it's been a joy to share it. And I think hopefully people want to watch it just as much, you know, cozy on the couch. And they, um, I, I hope it brings some sort of soothing. Canadian television audiences will remember you from your starring roles in Degrassi and in Being Erica, <laughs> <and> others. <laughs> um, do you see yourself returning to television 
or do you plan to focus more on film? What can you tell us about the difference between those two, those two areas? Um, I love doing, you know, I love acting. So I love performing and I'm also um, a theater actor. So all, all mediums excite me, you know. Um, I think we've seen such a shift in how television is ingested, the sheer amount and speed since the rise of Netflix, you know. Um, I do an anthology show for Netflix. It's a horror anthology show called Slasher, um, kind of like in the vein of American Horror Story and every season we play new characters and getting to sort of see that reach of that show um, because of Netflix across the world has been so incredible and the binge watch culture, you know. I think um, I TV was my first love truly because I watched soap operas with my nonny after school and just wanted to be inside the world all the time and I love that you could watch it every day and these characters were like your friends and then and I grew up watching a lot of films with my with my father and I think the biggest difference for me as an actor is that you know the lifespan of your character when you have a script for a film and you you can map out where it's gonna you know the beginning middle and end and with a series you you really don't know a lot of the time if it's gonna go many seasons how that's going to evolve. So both really excite me for different, for different reasons. But um, I'm certainly creating content that has roles, you know, for me and for other people in both film and, and in television. So, you know, it's like, it's whatever the bet, I think best, best story wins and wherever that makes sense, whether it be, um, you know, a miniseries or anthology or eight season network show or, or a film. I think that that kind of, uh, that kind of reveals itself depending on what the story you want to tell is. Those stories are really at the heart of, of how people connect and what would draw them to those projects. So what more, you had mentioned a couple of those projects, what more can you tell me about the ones you have in the pipeline in the coming months? Um, well, I'm, I'm working with Bruce McDonald, who I've been such a fan of as an actor, you know, since I was working on Degrassi, I met him and he directed there and he's, another East Canadian royalty for sure. So myself and Michael Cedar are producing his next feature written by Daniel McIver, who I'm also such a huge fan of and getting to work with, with those legends um, is, is pretty spectacular. Um, that's coming down the pipeline. So we've been developing that with them for the last year. I'm very, very excited about that. That's an aging um, queer love story road trip movie, uh, a really incredible script. It's called Vic and Doc and Duke go to the store. Um, the, yeah, the series, the series that are, that are cooking, um, uh, there's an Italian Canadian sitcom that I'm writing with Salvatore Antonio, who I worked with on Slasher and myself and Vanessa Antoine, who is the star of Dickstown on CBC have a show that's very close to us, um, about Toronto and mental health, um, that, that is, is evolving. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. I think whether, whether it's in front of the camera or behind the camera, I really, um, I just look forward to, to creation. Paula, thank you very much for taking the time to do this interview. It's so great to hear um, of, a, of a young Italian Canadian sort of bridging these two worlds and really being dedicated to telling these stories that will, will resonate with people, especially in a world that's, that's changing so quickly um, in a future that's going to be so uncertain. So thanks, Diana, thank thanks for such a such kind and thoughtful questions. Thanks. I look forward to seeing all of the projects that you mentioned, and it's thanks. really wonderful to see that you have this body of work. Thanks for taking the time to do this. Thank really you very much. Have a great day. You too. Take care. Bye. <laughs>